This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba for another technical diving tips, techniques, and trips video. Hello divers. Thanks for joining me today. The subject of today's video is bungee retainers. So without uh, bungee, uh, technical diving uh, would be much more difficult to do and uh, you would be um, required to use um, line on everything that you did uh, and there are many different applications uh, for uh, bungee and uh, we'll talk about a few of the more common ones here before we start talking about the uh, the content of the video so one of the most common applications for a bungee retainer of this type uh, is for securing your long hose uh, when you're not using it, when it's not in your mouth, you should always have it clipped off to a D-ring. Uh, and then uh, I also use this uh, to hold my um, redundant uh, bladder inflator so that I have uh, ready access to it. Uh, we have seen uh, in one of the um, couple of the recent videos uh, that uh, bungee uh, can also be used uh, for securing your uh, decompression regulator uh, second stage and uh, there are many others, securing uh, different accessories, um, all those kinds of different things. And uh, they are particularly useful because they do adhere to the non-metal on metal contact, uh, which means that if uh, something like a gate jams, uh, that you would possibly need to cut off um, whatever you're using to secure it, either line or a bungee. So uh, it's also useful for that. And um, I think there are a couple other videos on uh, keeping your gear using uh, bungee retainers and so on. All right, so uh, what I really wanted to talk about today uh, are a few uh, things that I've been doing recently with uh, bungee retainers, hose retainers, uh, whatever you want to call them. And um, I started out using uh, this particular type of uh, clasp uh, to hold the bungee. And uh, that's the kind that's uh, on here. And uh, I think if you buy them commercially um, from some dive supplier, I think this is the kind that you're normally going to get. And uh, this is okay, uh, but uh, it's really designed to have the bungee, the force on the bungee coming off from the bottom. Uh, and so if you have an application where the bungee comes out the side like that, then this type of clasp has a tendency to open. And the reason for that is the way that it's secured. So you can see the two little prongs on either side here. And what they do is they fit into a groove here, uh, here, and a, and a groove here. And if you have a force that tends to separate it like that, then what can happen is this clasp um, can, uh, can open up and uh, whatever you're securing is no longer secure. Okay, so we want to uh, go and uh, do better than that. Uh, we like to do the uh, concept of continuous improvement. Uh, and so um, we're gonna not uh, use that one anymore. Uh, and so then uh, this one came up and what this is, it's a, uh, it's a clamshell that closes on top of itself uh, and it has uh, two little catches there and there. Okay, so this is like a clamshell and closes up. And um, the issue with this one is, uh, if you put uh, higher, heavier duty bungee in this, then the clasp will not stay shut. Okay, so this one has, if you come across this one, this one has um, some weaknesses too. So uh, my search continued on uh, over a period of time and uh, I came across this particular one, which is a completely different design than the other two. Uh, it doesn't swing shut. Uh, what it does is it fits down in there like that. And so uh, what I found out with this one is, is uh, the way it's designed like that, I don't know if you guys can see that, the way it's designed like that is uh, kind of the harder you pull, uh, uh, the tighter it gets, okay? So it has uh, teeth that are angled, that are angled kind of at a slight upward angle. So if you pull on it, okay, it actually could get tighter. Uh, and it can't really it can't really release because the pull different the uh, pull direction if it's out the bottom like this or if it's out the side like that is still going to be translated into a vertical motion here, uh, and so uh, this is one of the ones that um, uh, that uh, I have been using uh, most recently. Now, if you go and you find this, uh, go do a, an Amazon search. I'll see if I can find it and post it in there. Uh, this one, uh, a lot of people that review it don't recommend this one uh, for uh, use, uh, except unless you're using really thin uh, bungee cord. Okay, so this is like a, um, a very uh, a small gauge bungee. I think this is like uh, uh, 1 16th uh, of an inch bungee. 
Uh, and um, it works fine for that, okay? The issue is, is when you start using bungee that's larger than that, uh, larger than 1 16th, and uh, that leads two things, okay? So one thing is, is that if you order a piece of bungee uh, like this, okay, you never really know what you get uh, because I've ordered some uh, bungee that's supposed to be 1 8th and it comes as 5 30 seconds, uh, which is actually much bigger. Or if I order 5 30 seconds, it's the same as 1 8th, okay? So, uh, and then there are some, uh, some uh, vendors that uh, talk about uh, the difference between 3 and 4 millimeter bungee as well, okay? So, uh, that's one of the things that you have to kind of take a chance on uh, because generally speaking, you want to use, um, you generally want to use thicker bungee if possible, uh, particularly if it's a more critical application. So, that's one thing. The other thing that I've discovered by uh, doing all this is that uh, what I'll call the uh, modulus of elasticity, okay, which is like how much it stretches, that also differs wildly among different types of bungee. So uh, this particular bungee, uh, I mean, that's about four inches, okay? And so I can pull it to about eight inches, which is about twice, okay, uh, the length of the original uh, length. And um, so there are some of them that have um, uh, that are much less stretchy. So in other words, if I take the four inches out and I try and stretch it, I might only be able to get the six inches. Okay, so the number of uh, rubber bands inside or the type of rubber bands inside uh, are much more dense. And so they do not allow uh, as much um, stretch uh, as uh, other brands. Okay, so those are some of the things that you need to take care of. Uh, you need to address when you're doing this. All right, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to, uh, there's no point in me showing you how to make one of these things because that would be like too easy to do. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, use uh, the thicker bungee uh, in one of these things. And if you go and you look on the Amazon description for these, uh, what happens is that um, uh, there are a lot of people that say, no, 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 no you can't do that. And uh, a lot of times on the internet when people says you can't do this or you can't do that, what it means is they couldn't do this or they couldn't do that. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show how to uh, take this very thick bungee uh, and uh, put it uh, on here. Okay, so the first thing is if you're using very thick bungee uh, and your tolerances to be able to do this are very tight, you're not going to be able to burn the end because burning the end uh, will make it a little bit bigger and that could potentially cause that could potentially cause an issue with this thing closing. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make I'm going to make one of these things, and uh, if I'm successful, I can do it in a reasonable amount of time. I might edit this, but I should be able to do it in a reasonable amount of time. You're going to end up with this, okay? And so this thing, no matter how hard you pull this thing, okay, I don't think it's going to come out. Uh, so I think this is a very reliable one. It's got the heavier, you can see that it's got much heavier, um, it's got this type of bungee thickness in it. Uh, and uh, it's not, it's not gonna, it's not coming out, okay? So uh, this is, I would consider this uh, something that I would actually uh, place a great deal of uh, reliance on. Okay, so I'm gonna go show you this procedure and I'll probably post this because everybody on that Web page. The uh, this web page says that you can't do it uh, because it's uh, it's too it's too uh, the bungee's too thick. It just does require you know some thought and some some technique. Okay, so I'm gonna stick this in here and I want to stick this uh, toward the top. Okay, so you have the maximum number of little grip things here, and then I'm gonna stick uh, this one uh, on the other side. And uh, while you're doing this, uh, what can happen is this can actually slip out from one side or the other. Uh, while I'm doing this whole process. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this this vice grip and I'm gonna put it across the top here like that so the so the bungee can't slide out, can't slide out the side while I'm doing this. Okay, so it's kind of locked in in place between the sides with the with the vice grip and also the uh, the um, the teeth. Okay, it's kind of locked in there. Okay, so once you have that, okay, then you can take this and you gotta squeeze it small and then you stick it in through the big end. Uh, down here like this okay and uh, so we got that okay now uh, so this is the second issue that people have difficulty with when they're doing this uh, is that this because of the thickness of the bungee the prongs are spread too far out that you can't fit this thing on here okay so uh, what I do uh, what I do is I take my second tool okay which is a set of needle nose pliers and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to squeeze this shut Okay, and I'm going to pop, I'm gonna pop that on, well, whoop, it fell out. I'm gonna pop this on, and you kinda of gotta hold it in, and I'd push it up a little bit, just so it doesn't come off, it doesn't come off immediately like that. Okay, so you wanna push that in as far as possible, and 
Uh, it's not locked in there yet because the the um, the uh, uh, locking pliers are on there, but it's good enough so that it's not going to temporarily fall out. Okay, so then what you can do is you can release that and take it off, and you can try pushing it in a little more, but you're not going to be able to get it in, or at least I've not been able to get it in, uh, because it is just like so hard to do. So then that's where this thing comes into play, this uh, slip joint pliers. I can get that working. Okay, so then you're gonna stick it on. You're gonna stick it on the top and the bottom like this, and then uh, you're gonna squeeze it. And it takes a little bit of force, okay? Uh, but you can you can squeeze that down in there, and it's now it's now shut. Okay, you can see how there's no gap there anymore, and it's shut. Okay, so uh, now this one kind of looks like this one. Okay, and I can just test it by pulling it. Okay, so I'm pulling it twice the twice the original length now, the maximum. Uh, of this okay and I could pull it this way and this thing's not going to come out okay so if you're going to make some of these up um, or you're going to buy them uh, make sure you get this type of design uh, and um, uh, and uh, it's put together with the type of uh, type of uh, bungee that uh, that you want the thickness of the bungee you want and you can tell just by looking at this that that this one here uh, volume wise or cross-sectionally it's probably twice the area cross-sectional area as the 1 16th inch bungee uh, by being virtue of, uh, of this thickness okay so this okay like I said uh, this is uh, what I would consider to be a very robust application and uh, this is what I'm saying to use uh, in the um, if you're going to be using the decompression hose uh, and uh, regulator uh, setup uh, that I'm using for 2025 uh, you want to use one that has um, want to use one that has thick bungee like this okay and of course uh, as we discussed uh, I also use something like this uh, for my um, redundant bladder, uh, securing my redundant bladder uh, inflator, okay? And you can use the same thing, do this for like attaching uh, attaching a reel to um, a bolt snap or whatever you have. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, this is Chris with Dives on Scuba. Uh, thanks for watching. And as always, uh, if you find these videos uh, useful, uh, please subscribe.